you were left trying to crack this Polybius Square cipher. You had some help. First of all, you knew that uh, the frequency of letters in English, the most common letter is E, followed by T and A and O and I. You also knew that TH is the most common two-letter combination, followed by HE and IN. You also knew that LL is the most common double letter, and that the most common word in English is the, followed by and. So using these, uh, especially the first one of letter frequency, you've got a real crack at solving this cipher. I'm going to give you one extra hint, just in case there's anyone who's got here who still wants to try it and who hasn't. So here's the last set of clues. The most frequent first letter of English words is T. So most words that you will read start with T, followed by O, followed by A. The most frequent second letter in the words that we read, H, followed by O and E and I. The most common third letter, E and S and A and R and N. So that, that gives you an added uh, little oomph. But on the other hand, we don't know which, which uh, letters there start words, isn't that right? Hmm, so you'll have to think about that. So this is your last opportunity to go out and try to solve uh, this cipher if you haven't already done so. The next second I'm going to change and you're going to see the solution. So now we're going to be talking about the solution. How to go about finding it. Okay, first of all, um, the first thing that you probably noted is that some of these two-letter combos occur much more f frequently than others. DD occurs 11 times, as does AG. DA occurs a little bit less often, 10 times. And DX occurs 9 times. So there are the... that's um, whenever we dissect that cipher, that's the frequency graph that we get. So we're going to guess that E is either equal to DD or AG. Why E? Well, remember, E is the most common letter uh, in the English language. So it's a fair guess that E is one of those two. And while we're at it, um, we might as well admit that we're not guaranteed that E is going to be one of those two. It might also be DA. It might also be DX. Okay, It could also be one of the ones further down. But it's most likely to be one of the first two. So that's where we're going to start our search, and if it doesn't work, then we're going to progress um, downward. So, what, what is T likely to be? Well, T is likely to be one of the other ones, uh, of those most common. So if AG is E, then DD is probably T. Um, but it could also be reversed. It could be that DD is E and that AG is T. Remember, both of those occurred 11 times. So. How do we? Uh, how how could we progress? How, what extra information would help us in determining which of those two is E and which of those two is T? Well, let us look at an interesting phenomenon, and that is that DG follows AG a lot. In fact, four times in our little cipher. Hmm. That should give us pause to thought for thought. Let us look at two-letter combos in English. TH occurs the most often, followed by HE. So if AG is equal to T, then it's a fair guess that DG is equal to H. So let's, uh, let's keep that in the back of our heads. Is there any other reason to suspect that T might be AG? Well, let's look at any other patterns that we see here. Well, we see that there's a three-letter um, sequence repeated here and a six-letter sequence repeated here. How many of you found that? Okay. That surely is an interesting... That th those surely are words. 
and those words are beginning with AG in both cases. That's interesting because we know that the most frequent first letter in a word is T. So again, it reinforces that we're probably correct in assigning AG is T. Okay. The last possible um, thing that we could look at is the most common word. So we've got TH and it looks like this might be the. Now that would surely be a great boost to, to solve. And indeed, uh, if you look, um, solve this cipher, we, we do find out that, that AG, DG, DD is the. I lied before. I'm going to give you one last chance to try to solve this cipher if you haven't already done so. And now is it. I'm telling you that AG is equal to T, DG is equal to H, and DD is equal to E. Now, go forth and solve it <laughs> if you haven't already done so. Now we're going to go ahead. This is the complete solution that you've found. And the enemy have withdrawn from the trench in front of our position. We are advancing to occupy this trench starting immediately. Did the Germans use the Polybius cipher in World War I? A 200 BC invention. No, they did not use the Polybius square in World War I, but they did use it as the basis um, to get creative and construct their own uh, unique cipher system. And it was actually Fritz Nebel who did the inventing. And we're going to look at the actual ADFGX cipher that was used by the Germans in World War I, starting now. So, you're on the German side, you're a Morse code operator, and you want to encipher the enemy have withdrawn. So that message is the first thing that you write out, and then we use our Polybius square, and we use the same code word that that person came up with, fortune. And then we're going to complete the Polybius square, same as before. Now we're going to do the same enciphering that we've just done. The enemy have withdrawn. So that's the Polybius square encipher. But now we're going to continue and do more enciphering on that. I need another volunteer. No, not the same person. Someone else, please. Thank you. Think of a word. Bravo, bravo. Okay, so we're going to choose bravo as our word. And now we're just going to um, put our enciphered letters across. So we start off with AG. So T was enciphered to AG. That's what we start with. AG. Next is DG. Next is DD. That's the word the. And now we're going to keep on going. We're going to go to DD, DA, DD. And we're going to complete this and we're going to end off with DA at the end. Okay, and that's, that's for N. And you see how we're just wrapping around all the time. Um, so once we finish a line, we just start the next line. Okay, that seemed easy enough. Now what we do is we reorganize um, Bravo alphabetically. So let's see how that works. Here we go. Bravo alphabetically is Aborv. <laughs> Okay, so that's uh, the big step and the, the innovation that Nebel had whenever he constructed this new cipher system is that you could make it a lot tougher by doing this little shuffle. Okay, now we're going to read down the A column. And that's reading down the A column. Now we're going to read down the B column. Now we're going to read down the O column. And the R and the V. There we go. And that's the um, enciphered message that we send. And there it goes, off to our friend. Now we're going to imagine that we are that friend and we have to figure out what that message says that's incoming. So there's the message that we receive. 
we're going to be going backwards through the sequence. So we're going to go from 7, now we're going to go to 6. So that's easy, we know how to make that step, that's just uh, Morse code. And then we're going to be going from 6 to 5. Are we going to use the ABOR for the Bravo matrix? Well, since we're going backwards, we, we go to the ABOR matrix. Now, there is a tricky part here, and that is, where do those two little squares on the bottom go? We know we have to have those two extra squares. If you just count the number of letters that we have, we, we know that we have to have those two squares, but where do they go? And I'm going to leave that for you to figure out. So now we have to place that into the Abworth matrix. Let's start with A column. Now we'll go to B and O and R and V. Complete. Now the next step is to shuffle it up. Here we go. Shuffle it up. Now we're at Bravo. Next step, we read across horizontally, starting with A, G, D, G. Here we go. Let's read across. A, G, D, G, D, D, all the way across. And now, using the Polybius square, we are going to decipher that. And here we go. The enemy have withdrawn. Really? The enemy have withdrawn? Good. Well, that's, that's good for us. So that is uh, how you encipher and decipher using the ADFGX cipher. Okay, it's time for you guys to think about how tough this would be to understand if you didn't have the code letters, the code words Bravo and Fortune. Think if you're now on the Allied side, how on earth would you decipher this? And don't forget that those code words change every day. Well, the person who eventually solved this uh, was Georges Jean Pavin. And this genius made himself ill and never really recovered for the rest of his life. Um, this was his crowning achievement uh, to break the ADFGX cipher. It's time for you guys to uh, look at solving your own. So you're going to be decoding your own ADFGX ciphertext. You know the you're a friend of whoever sent this, and so you know Bravo and Fortune are the code words, and you can either choose to so solve the medium tough one or the very tough one. Okay, go ahead and solve that. After you do that. I encourage you to create your own ciphertext and then let someone else solve it. So you'll be typing in your or play, uh, writing in your English message at the top and then you'll be um, uh, enciphering it and then you can give the ADFGX message at the bottom, let somebody else see that and see if they can figure out, uh, you, knowing the Bravo and Fortune code words, and see if they can figure out what the original message was. Next, try it with your own code words. So this time we're not going to use Bravo, we're going to use another five letter code word of your choice. And instead of using Fortune, we're going to use another code word. Now what would happen, for example, if you have a code word like Aardvark, where you have two A's in it, or three A's? Well, in that case, you only put the first A um, into your matrix and then every time that another A comes up you, you just forget about it and you don't put it in. You just go on to the next letter of your code word. Then you're going to be deciphering the, the person who has enciphered using their own code word for instead of Bravo and their own code word instead of Fortune. Um, they will give you those code words and then you have to decipher their message using this sheet. What would happen if instead of Bravo, you were given the wrong code word? Let's say you were given the code word snake. Well, if you had fortune correct, but snake wrong, what would happen? Let's see. Well, whenever you would shuffle this up, um, 
you would find that instead of a letter frequency like this, you would end up with a very flat letter sequence. So this does not look like English. So immediately you would know something here doesn't look right. You have nearly as many DAs as you have XDs. And that would mean that you have nearly as many E's in your ciphertext as Z's. Mm, there's something wrong there. So uh, this would be a typical warning sign that you're on the wrong track in deciphering. I hope you enjoyed uh, this exploration of the ADFGX cipher. I have two groups to thank. First of all, Michael Pocock and Maritime Quest for their use of these beautiful images from the Carpathia and the Titanic. And secondly, the Library and Archives Canada for their images of World War I troops.